Spark of Hope is around the corner, but the Destiny world is still reeling from the recent Holocron updates. While the meta shifts, we cross the dunes of Tatooine as we look at a famous protocol droid and his t trusty astromech sidekick. This is episode 133, Look Sir, Droids. You have been well trained. No, you don't have to Final. carry a sword to be powerful. No. I won't fail you. Oh, do not. I'm not afraid. Please don't try. After a bit of a technology delay, we are back for another week of the Chance Cube here, episode 133, um, which means we've been doing this longer than a number of M&Ms in a small travel size bag. <laughs> no? I feel, now I, I want to know how many are in there. I feel like I need More to start writing that. something. I start writing a little joke at the front of each show. I did not write that when I came out on the spot. You could have dad joked it. We could have a dad joke of the week. <laughs> Inspired by my daughter, who just thinks I'm funny when she looks no, at me. No! Don't install updates! Please hold. Remind later. Stupid PC and all your stupid updates. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I agree with Impulse that that was stretch. <laughs> um, oh, fiddly hey. sticky news. Kim. What? What? Uh, before the show started, you were showing me something cool that I think we should show all the I people. I was. My really wonderful friend Josh is an antique dealer. So occasionally he finds me cool records and stuff like that. And today he found me this, which is an old weekly reader book from 1983. I should post a picture of this on um, the Facebook books. Um, it's a, basically a kid's book of Return of the Jedi. And That's so... Fun. It's got really cool. You guys can't see that. It's got really cool artwork in it. It's got scenes from the movie. Mm -hmm. And then clearly a, a very abbreviated story. But it's so cute. And it's in great shape. Like, great shape. That looks um, awesome. Copyright 1983. So it's slightly younger. Um, but other than just a couple of rough edges... So I can't decide. Like, I could put it back here on the shelf, but it would probably fall over and miss how my life works. So, I don't know. We may have to do a uh, a reading of it, <laughs> and we'll post it out, and then we'll do stuff. There you go. That sounds like fun. Um, but yeah, that was a super exciting... That's my Star wars -y stuff this week. Like, it's nice to come across cool little, little thingies like that. Yeah, no, I totally get it. Um... You know, uh, as many of you know, I do work at the World of Disney. Not the World of Disney. That's actually a store at Disney World. I work at Disney World. I love that you were, you're so specific because you work at Disney that you actually made that correct. I did. Sorry. I was like, I have not work there. That's a horrible place to work. And <laughs> no one else would, unless they're like, what do you call it? Disney files would know that that's, that's right. the thing. But uh, this Galaxy Edge thing has us all on edge. Haha. <sighs> Ooh. I know. I mean, we're excited because Disney, you know, Disneyland just launched theirs a couple weeks ago. Uh, I've been watching lots of YouTube videos. Been eyeing everything that they're doing, and uh, we're getting ready for our plans of our own. And um, funny thing, the weekend Galaxy's Edge opens, I will be in Virginia at the Grand Championship for the Nova Open. I'm sure your coworkers are thrilled <laughs> that you won't be there that week to help. I'll be, I'll be making all the plans for the launch bay and then saying deuces. <laughs> Toodaloo, kids. Have fun when it's busy. Yeah, well, I mean, they've, gonna... they've done a smart thing with limiting like how much time that people mm -hmm. can be in there, and it seems to have, at least what I'm seeing online, has helped with the crowds in California. But yeah, um, Disney, Disney World will be a whole new beast, but we'll see. Oh yeah, see it's happens. almost like Disneyland's their soft open, <laughs> like to prepare them for the chaos that will be Disney World. Right. Sure. Definitely. Definitely so. Um, but yeah, so we're excited about that. And uh, been like you said, been eyeing all the products that are becoming and can't wait to get oh, in there myself, cool stuff. Um, both as a guest and uh, hopefully someday get to work in there. But uh, not, I'm, I'm okay not working there immediately. <laughs> I'm going to need you. Like, I know usually you're super awesome about sending me pictures from shops of stuff for sale in Disney, but I may be like, don't send me any. Don't don't send me any stuff because I'm gonna buy everything you send me a picture of. Right. Well, 
just have to start a deposit over to you like a weekly transfer from the paycheck and then just get boxes arriving periodically at home in fact if you could set a direct deposit from your paycheck into my bank account um uh, it'll pay for my next visit because i want to come i wish it weren't so hot in florida it's it's toasty and by toasty i really I mean want to come visit humid it's gross and humid oh, no. and this time of year it oh, rains every no. day at three o'clock what's wrong no it What's froze wrong? on my side. It froze on my side. Can you hear me? I can hear you. We were both frozen quite. It was pretty funny. Oh. Well, I can see you yeah. and hear you, and you were never frozen. Oh, well, I, you were on my side, and I was very upset about it. It's a good thing I didn't say the words I was going to say. Because <laughs> then I had to edit the show even more. <laughs> um, well, before we jump into the news, we do want to give a big thanks, a shout out to our newest patrons, uh, Derek Bertram and Nathan Henderson. Uh, thank you guys joined us via the patreon and we're super excited about that because uh well this show is expensive <laughs> actually if i no. saw cor- what no i was gonna say if i saw correctly derek is from australia so mm-hmm. that's always exciting and nathan is actually here in ohio and uh and that certainly helps keep uh this show afloat and allows us to get out to the pl- the people's and stream some stuff, especially things like the Nova Open. Uh, we want to do more and more of that, of course. Uh, it just, it's, uh, you get to these convention halls and internet's like thousands of dollars, which is ridiculous. And which is why we've gotten to the situation we're in right now. But you know what? Mm-hmm. Eventually we'll pay those credit cards off. Maybe. <laughs> I figure they'll just, they're just, like the ones I have are there for life. Like we're just pals. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Well, the the major credit card companies have uh, stopped asking the Chansky for money, and they they pass it on to the other people. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never find me, except unless they watch the show, which is probably what they're all doing right now. That's probably the four people watching. It's all the creditors. Like, that's where that guy that's is. Where is. Um, anyways, uh, for that, I can't type. And shall we get? Shall we time. jump into the news? <laughs> Kim. Yep. You want to jump struggling. into the news? You know, Let's you know, do some news. Thank you. you. I was like, you normally affirm when I when I segue. It it's there's still a little herky jerky on my side, but let me take that back, huh? Neil, find what you need. <laughs> the summer season is always the season for big events, uh, and we were remiss last week to not mention the UK Nationals, um, which it would be the UK Grand Championship now, is the official terminology that organized play is using, uh, as we are in this year of transition for OP. Um, You're done with OP? No, never mind. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, and the UK Grand Championship happened before the, uh, the, the mess of last week's, not mess, mm-hmm. the, the glory of last week's Holocron update. The plethora of updates. The plethora of updates. So, um, you know, huge congratulations to Greg Pike, who for the second year in a row took that yeah, event. Yeah, that's crazy. That's awesome. Good for um, him. And the runner-up was Sarah Evans. So uh, congrats to her for yeah. uh, fighting all the way up to the, the final table there. Um, yeah, well played. And it, it appears uh, Greg Pike brought with him uh, the Snoke Watto... Um, Oh, deck shoot. that is no more. <laughs> the, the Snoke Watto Watt Watt Tambor deck. Oh yeah, uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, the Snoke will no longer be uh, generating the resources in that variation of that support heavy deck. Um, hey, it looks like he was uh, using a. Is, is that Parker's art? Oh, maybe. I think I. Where did I hear about that? It's very possible. That kid pops up all over the world. Yeah, it looks like Parker's uh, art for Wada. Well, look at that. Look at that. Congrats to Parker Simpson for being in the the finals of the... (laughs) (laughs) Parker Simpson was on the final table of UK Nationals. There you go. Congratulations, sir. Um, 13 villain decks and 3 hero decks in the top 16, uh, favoring the two-white pairing, um, which is surprising considering the number of... uh, uh, considering that the three wide support decks have been mm-hmm. uh, really what's been championing the world, um, and and I think this will be the last big hurrah for the you know these ramp decks um, with Vader's fist, Mega Blaster Troopers, and Entourage leading the way in the support heavy decks for the villains. Um, yeah, thank goodness. 
because I think uh, people were just about to flip tables for that one. Um, it... And that's usually how that goes down. You know what I mean? Like we're we're done with. Like it seems to be that as a, as a community as a whole, we're done <laughs> with a certain thing right about this time that it's like everybody's like, all right, that's it. I'm done yeah. with this. It's fun, even if the even if a holocron update doesn't modify it, people are like, okay, I'm not playing that anymore. Yeah. As a whole, like we can we can we consciously all decide we not to do it. Of, whoop, yeah. Um. Some interesting pairings, as uh, you know, Snoke Tarkin has been a favorite, anyways. Um, uh, Vader Battle Droid uh, oh, was in the top 16. Um, some of the three wides, Padme Leia, the Padme Bosch. Decks, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, was in the top 16. Uh, Palp and Watto, a couple of variations of that. Um, uh, Iden Verso and Tobias Beckett, uh, which is great to see them. Uh, kind mm. of run in there. Uh, more three wides. Uh, Captain Phasma. Retribution deck. Ooh. So she showed up. And Leia Lore Santeca with Armored Reinforcement, which is interesting. Uh, with Padme's Starship as the support that you're pulling out. Um, more three wides. Yoda Leia. Uh, aggressive. That would be an aggressive mill variation so that's something stuff. we haven't heard in a while at yeah. least i haven't like hmm. yeah this astrogation i was actually looking yeah this Go astrogation ahead. plot that um has recently come out uh has been critical for these uh these fast mill decks oh. mm -hmm. uh, allowing uh you know tap that when you play the upgrade uh and then you know getting in a card off the top of your opponent's deck at the same time um, which is how to let a card like A99 Aquata Breather come into, to come, like, <laughs> who, who ever wow. thought we would be playing that card, you know? No. And now it's shown up in this uh, Yoda Leia Mill variation, so it's pretty funny how a card can be, could be nothing and then come back and get some utility in a future variation of a deck, so. Yeah. But yeah, so, um, you know, the Grand Championship, Grand Champion Greg Pike, second year in a row. Um, oh, my mistake. It was a uh, trooper. Uh, so Elite Snoke, Watto, First Order Stormtrooper, uh, three wide. Um, you know, playing two Entourage, two Mega Blasters, and two Vader Fists um, with Ooh. a couple other supports in there. Uh, very few upgrades and um, just, you know, Snoke and Watto in there for the money play. I mean, neither, none of those characters do a lot of damage, right? They're, yeah. They're, yep. And I was reading somewhere, um, and I think it was, was it the Destiny Council just put out an article on uh, how to win worlds, I think? Yes. And um, interesting. Yep, I think so. Interesting. Uh, actually, I thought it was going to be frivolous, and then you get into it, and he really breaks down deck types and archetypes and what they're good against. It's almost like reading. Oh, cool. It's almost like reading a Pokemon strength and weakness chart. Fire beats grass and and ice, and but is weak against water. That's pretty much what. It, like he went through all the different archetypes and what was good against what. And um, that's cool. That's very helpful, actually. So that was really neat. But one of the things uh, you know that was kind of brought up is when you think about these decks, um, you know, support decks are so well favored right now because even once you lose a character, the support stays on the table. You're still rolling damage. Yeah. Um, I've always liked those from a, it almost feels like you have another char character mm -hmm. that somebody can't get rid of. So you're still able to get some damage out. Even if you're, you know, if you're losing, if you, you know, as long as you got somebody out there, you so still it, have an opportunity yeah. to get some kind of damage. It really, it really does feel like, um, it is, it would be difficult to not go a support direction or at least mm -hmm. in some way with your character, with your deck, because, there is so much longevity when it comes to having supports on the table. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if, you're... if you can get them out early. Yeah. Yeah. If you can get them out early enough, of course. Uh, so awesome with the, with the UK nationals, UK grand champion. Got a I'm, terminology is. I me. know I struggled with that. I was, I forget what I was doing. And I had, I had to go look it up because I'm like, what are they calling that? <laughs> I had a hard enough time last year getting nationals and whatever they had at Gen Con, the difference. Look, um yeah yeah and now i'm trying to read like i struggle enough in life without any additional help thank you very much ffg <laughs> quit changing names and stuff and speaking of terminology why 
Are Checkers and Rileys different things but the same? Why are there two of them? Why do they have different names? I don't know. I don't understand why. Because they they're Rileys both names on the cup. That's so they can be cheap. So they can ship your cups up here to Ohio and we can use them at rallies. But yeah, you did. Because we, I don't know of any checkers near us. It's all oh, rallies. It's all checkers down here. Wild. Anyways, Kim, Origins, go. Origins. My favorite thing of the whole. It's my most wonderful favorite time of the year. True story. Um, Thanks. Tomorrow. I feel yeah. like second right now. What? Origins? Yep. Like. What do you mean? My favorite convention is what I'm saying. That's my favorite. It's my favorite convention of the year. How's that? Does that make you feel better? Sure. Like that I go to attend. Okay. Nova's different because it's <laughs> a war gaming. Anyway, it start. What well, it unofficially starts tomorrow, so oh, wow. I will be up there. <laughs> my, I'm I'm going with a friend, uh, Thursday and Friday, because Jim has to work. <laughs> and the friend texts me. I said, "What time do you want me to be up there?" And he tells me to be ready um, at his house at 7 a.m., which means I have to leave here at 6 a.m. And I said, and I, I had him go check and see what time the uh, the actual hall, because the main gaming hall does not open until tomorrow, until Thursday. Mm -hmm. But there's like some some gaming areas that are open, and those don't open till like 11 or 12. So I convinced him to not make me get up at 5 a.m. to drive to his house. Um, but there's, on average, I would say last year, there were about 20,000 people at this convention. So it wow. is, it was the second largest in the U.S. I believe PAX Unplugged is very quickly um, reaching the same level of attendees as what Origins does. It may have even surpassed it last year. But it's, it is a well-run con. It's well-represented by board game publishers. There's not as many um, big... A big game announcements at Origins, although Plan B Games tends to do some of their announcements there. Those all come out at Gen Con, which is sixty to seventy thousand people mm. <laughs> over in Indianapolis. That is the, that's the largest convention in the U.S. Uh, but there will definitely be some Destiny happening there. So there are GQs scheduled, there are pods scheduled. Um, so I'll definitely um, you will see me in and out of that area all weekend, all week weekend long. I think I might slip a few wattos in my pocket to take up there. So if you see me, you should come over. I'm trying to think if there should be a phrase, but I haven't been that clever. I thought about that like three days ago, and then I didn't think of a phrase, and here we are talking about it. I don't have a phrase. So, um, yeah, I'll have buttons, and I'll have a few wattos. I won't have a ton, so you better probably try to find me early in the day. Um, our Mike Ohio Hill, I know, will be there uh, playing in the GQ. And I and I believe we have a few other family members I, that may be in and out. So if I see them, we'll hop on. We'll try to hop on Facebook Live and say howdy do, or at least get some pictures. We'll try to report back some of the information on on the GQ there. There, I would I would love to stream it if we could, but the internet availability just isn't there for Origins for I'm that. Sure. Um, it's it's not in a place that we would be able to plug in, and we certainly would not survive. Well, you just saw what my laptop did. We would not be able to survive <laughs> trying to stream. Apparently, even with whatever, um, I'm, we got a hamster on a wheel in the back, and that's what he does. But so I so we're gonna try to get you up to date stuff as we can, as we hear, as we see what's going on, um, and then we'll be covering some of the board game goodness starting Thursday through. Definitely Saturday, probably Sunday. Cool. Lots of fun times to be had. I have to try to not buy as many games as last year. Mm. I'm out. Of, I'm running out of space. So <laughs> might find some games for giveaways for Tabletop Rebellion. So that could be a possibility. So you're telling people that we they need to follow our Facebook page as well as Tabletop Rebellion for all the latest news from Origins. If you want to know what's going on in Origins, we have your hot ticket in the door. And I love to take pictures at Origins. I'm going to take the handy cam and see if I can't get some video stuff. But now I'm a little concerned about how I'm going to edit that. So <laughs> it's super fun when your computer crashes the day before something very large that you're going to go do. That's right. Um, hmm. So, or like I said, Origins is if you have an opportunity, if you can't make it this year, because I get it, it starts tomorrow. Um, it's an affordable convention. It's $20 to get in a day. I think there's a pass for the whole weekend that might be a little bit cheaper. 
tons of places to stay around there, tons of things to do. Um, and I like the reason I say it's my favorite con is because it's easy. There's still a lot of things to check out and see and do. I mean, it's having a GQ, so it ha- to me that speaks that it's a, l- a larger convention. Mm-hmm. But you can still, unlike Gen Con, which I have to say that I've never been to because I'm a little claustrophobic and it makes me nervous. You can still walk around and get into booths, and and for most other than a couple of of publishers, oh, you can pretty easily sit down or or come back pretty soon to be able to sit down and try out a game and it'll be like that for the pods that um it's cascade games there again running the gq the pods and all that stuff and they're they're doing pretty they've they've got some history under their belts now they got some experience for sure (laughs) so we'll certainly um i'll be able to should be able to check out the prize wall tomorrow and see if there's anything new um and we'll we'll share that with you guys too as we see it and sounds awesome Super to excited. see what else pops up. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you're if you're there, definitely um, keep. I'll try to post kind of where we are, or when we are on the Facebook page. That's probably the best place to follow. And like I said, I'll probably have some wattos with me each day, and we just love to chat and say hi. Absolutely. Thanks, Kim, for going out and representing. Usually, you say you're welcome after you say thanks. I'm confused. What's happening, Kim? Kim. 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 What happened? Kim. There you are. It. There was a long time that things were quiet and scary. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm happened? just like. I'm like. Well, we're frozen again. It I'm looked out. like. It looked like you were just ignoring me. You that's exactly That's what it looked like when you did it to me and I was like, is he just holding still really well? You like, weren't holding still. We we saw every little do, eye twitch. Do I not see him blinking? Like that was the But yeah, it was totally we you and I were both frozen on mine. Weird. Okay. Oh, I hate technology. We're going to be calling the internet company soon and try to figure this out. Sounds good. Um This makes me yell. Last bit of news, and we'll be quick about it. Uh, of course, the Nova Open Grand Championship is coming up. Uh, just a short, uh, less than 80 days away. Um, that is going to be the big, uh, what used to be the North American, nope. What used ah, to be the there US, we go, we don't even know. <laughs> what used to be the U.S. Championship. Um, for the last two years, we've been there to stream. Uh, and this is a, say, f- the best we can do in terms of uh, quality and uh, full commentary. Um, we try to get some commentary commentators from the local area so you don't have to hear me talk for three days straight or Kim talk for three days straight. But Kim and I will both be there this year. I would love that. Um, my wife will be there with me, uh, our little baby. I'm trying to get her a chance Yay. to keep onesie because uh, I think that would be cute. And uh, not really sure who else is coming with us, but um, we're going to try to line up some great commentators. Uh, last year, we brought some singles to sell as well as some of our play mats this year. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to partner with. I'm going to partner with a local game store, um, and bring you many more singles, booster packs, and boxes uh, that will be available to uh, for purchase. Which is something we've mm. are harder to find at Nova because they generally cater to the wargaming crowd and not the Destiny crowd. Correct. Um, I t- scoured the last time I was there. <laughs> on top of that, uh, we've partnered with a couple of your favorite accessory vendors out there um, to bring some of their inventory to you, which is uh, something you normally don't find out in the wild. So, um, uh, so far we have lined up Vindicator Designs uh, for some of their awesome tokens uh, and Faust MFG for their great deck boxes, or not, sorry, deck, not deck boxes, dice storage compartments, mm. um, which are my favorite Uh compartments to store yeah one of their boxes stores an entire place that's worth of dice for a set which is really awesome and they're like oh, cool they're they're not very big i mean they're and, and they're all foam inside and it's, it's amazing so i'll have to show one sometime um we're excited to be partnering with both those vendors maybe more um and if not more then those will be a perfect addition to what mm-hmm. you'll be able to purchase in person uh at the nova open to support um not only us but them as well uh because of course they will get all their proceeds, um, and uh, you'll be helping out us out uh, bring their products to you, which would be great. So, and we hopefully continue to do that year after year as uh, the Nova cool. Open continues to have the Grand Championship and continues to invite us back. Uh, which I'm not sure why they keep doing it, but they, they do. They like us. Last year they even made me a moderator 
for their Destiny panel. Which I'm sad that I missed that. <laughs> there are stories. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shall we get? Let's get on to our discussion. How about let's that? Let's get there. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I always say: speak softly and drive a big tank. Well, it's time we talk about these two droids. I think we we were, we didn't in the past because there was so much going on last week that we uh, we kind of forgot the fact that Team Covenant actually had some cards they were talking about. Um, in fact, we probably should have talked about their Night Sister stuff this week, but we didn't. So eventually we'll talk. <laughs> I'm still really confused about that. Like I know that you brought me up to speed, and I almost need to go back and watch a little bit more of that because I've seen all the Clone Wars, and I got very confused. When they're when everybody's talking about zombies in Destiny, I got very confused. So shame on me for not keeping up with not keeping up what? with the fact that zombies exist is... in the Star Wars canon. What is happening? Because I feel like I would have remembered that, but I didn't. So. I don't know. All that Night Sister stuff's kind of fuzzy. Yeah. Because you're trying, like, you spent all the Night Sister episodes trying to wrestle with the whole like other sides of the Force kind of thing. That's fair. And maybe that... Uh, we'll go with that. That's what I was doing. That's what you were doing, yeah. So you just kind of ignore the whole fact that some sort of dark dark side energy brought a bunch of Night Sister zombies to life. Ew. Anyways, we're not talking about Night Sister zombies. We're talking about C-3PO and R2-D2. The two droids sure. that are uh, part of the... What seems to be an, if a rather extensive exclusive preview from the teams of Covenant. Yeah, yeah, they've had a few. And then they had some streams that they were playing decks with them in, and I have not had an opportunity to catch any of those. I don't have they had them feel yet? like a, well, I I'm trying they, to remember because I think when tomorrow the first is the first one, was, one. Maybe that's what it is because I know that it was a decent amount of time between when they had the images of the cards to spoil them to when they were actually using them. Like it was a it was a pretty big stretch, which a lot of I people made how big that was. A lot of people made quite humorous comments about that too. <laughs> but anyway, well, they were nice enough, like because at first you couldn't see three three POs. Correct, correct. They, sides, and yeah. they and they were kind enough to I think later that day to mm -hmm. to switch them around. Well, R two had been yeah. spoiled because he was on the back of the box for he so long. He was on the box. That's right. Um, so C three PO was kind of the new card, and uh, so now this is this is what's interesting to me. Is... I feel like it's the same art. It's so similar to the old art. Uh, maybe. Um. What's interesting to me is they uh, <laughs> they they're now trending. Well, when the game was first designed, I guess maybe this is just me trying to wrestle with thematics, right? Um, droids were always supports. Mm -hmm. Characters were people, and now that we have supports that are kind of charactery, right? We got like Mega Blaster mm -hmm. Trooper. That's like a person, but it's actually a support. And then we've got C-3PO and R2-D2 who have now promoted to the ranks of characters. Now, granted, these aren't the first droid characters we've had. Of course, K-2 was a character. Sure. IG-88, um, who I believe is getting another variation soon. Yep, yep, yep. Honestly, oh, it's not the same art. I don't know why I'm they're sorry. reprinting characters when there's so many more characters they can do. But Right. There's Yeah, we're not out of characters by any means. But, but... I get how... you want. I, I understand the thought of keeping those favorites in rotation. Sure. Like in the loop. So, um, and I think you have enough room that you have opportunity to, here's what they did back in this set. And now I can, I mean, we've seen that with all of them. There are different variations. Yeah, the art's not even close. I'm insane. So, um, it's even possible that Lucasfilm may have an influence on what characters come in out in sets based on release dates and timing and anything they want to synergize with. Yeah, I feel like we poked Jeremy a little bit with that question at one point in time in an interview, and he kind of danced around it. So, but I would think I would Spark think of, it's just a... Spark of Hope is coming out s s well, soon. not not too close to the Mandalorian, but you know, IG eighty eight, or at least variations of what that droid that? are in yeah, the Mandalorian. Because that streaming service is fall, right? Yeah, I think November, think August, September. Oh, maybe it is November. Anyways, so I'm just I'm shocked that these two droids have made it into the ranks of characters and and low low point cost characters nonetheless. Mm -hmm. um, they are making um, six die starts more and more possible, mm -hmm. um, even though those uh, characters in that lineup are are pretty pale in terms of you know what they're able to accomplish. Uh, C3PO, a red hero droid, eight health, um, focus, focus, shield, resource, resource, blank, 
eight, ten are his point costs. Um, shocking enough, Ooh, he's that legendary. Both of these characters are legendary, which surprises yeah. me. Yeah. Um, C3PO, after you activate this character, you may resolve one of your dice, increasing his value by one if you spend one resource or spot R2D2. Hmm. So C3PO kind of has a, I mean, he has a power enhancement thing to him, right? So you activate C3PO, roll up the die, uh, mm -hmm. and then you can resolve any die on the table, increasing his 501, which really does kind of mirror with what his support version did, right? Because the support mm -hmm. version allowed you to um, resolve his die as any side. So this he does have this like ongoing ability to manipulate dice and and use dice in different ways because you could resolve a uh, one focus into a two or a two focus into a three um mm -hmm. c3pro may be a way to generate more resources this way um well and i think i like that he is a low cost character with a decent shot of getting either resources or a focus right or i mean even shields are you know pretty solid in the game currently mm -hmm. and even rolling his dice out even if you only play one and use his ability on it Two resource, two shields, or two focus immediately. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, and then R2. <laughs> I love the fact that R2 does damage. I do like, too. Thematically, I think that's just awesome. Um, you know, I am surprised in all this, of the, and, and I'm sure this will be one of the next droids that we see, but we haven't seen Chopper. And that's a droid, I think, of doing damage, like, to an extent. Oh, I don't know yeah, why. Yeah. I just... I'd love to see Chopper as a character or support. We haven't seen Chopper yet. I wonder what Rebels out of... Well, I mean, they keep going back to the Clone Wars TV show, so I don't know why Rebels would be any different. Mm -hmm. But they haven't really, you know, ever since Rebels went off the air, they haven't really gone back to that series for No, we got that designs. we got that quick little hit of Sabine and Ezra. We've had Ezra times. Oh, that's and true. Ezra did get reprinted Kanan. recently. Yeah, and Kanan and Hera. Hera. I forgot about Hera. Yeah, so you we had most of the Rebels, but mm -hmm. not Chopper. That was a missed Fix opportunity. Fix that, Jeremy. Fix that. <laughs> um, uh, so R two D two is a blue character droid. Uh, you cannot play blue abilities on this character. After you activate this character, you may turn one of your dice to its first side, or to oh. any side instead. If you spot C three PO. Huh. That's an inter That's a thing we've not seen. Never done Top before. Box of its dice reference. So so. So it's you're saying that would be if it were his die, that would be a one melee correct how I'm, it's the first box so if on C the right so if c3po confusing. is not on the table you can only change a die to its topmost spot which is going to be which generally is usually, okay. damage and usually and mm -hmm. the lower of the damage options mm -hmm. but also which usually a, a free one exactly that's what i was going to say at least that's usually the one that doesn't cost you anything depending mm -hmm. upon the character but most of the time that's a weird <laughs> Kudos to trying to figure out how to word that on a card, because that's confusing. The topmost box of his dice reference. <laughs> because I still think dice reference is confusing. I just want him to draw a line like that. <laughs> <laughs> because even that description, I'm like, what the crap's a dice reference? Like, I feel like you cut off the sentence. Do I flip the card over to get the rest of it? Right. Um, so interesting enough that he's, um, you know, he's 811, so they feel like his second die is worth more than uh, C-3PO's second die. I still, I, I see these being played with one die way more than two. Um, and maybe I'm eight, wrong. Eight. But well, eight and eight, so I could 16. see R2 being, being maybe worthwhile at two because he has damage. I, could but, see I mean, these... that's 11. That's a lot in a... I mean, I could see these two with Ayla. I think that'd be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Um... And that'll allow for some consistent damage output. And as long as your dice does, dice doesn't get controlled, what would be really great is if you could figure out a way to activate R2 and C3PO in the same turn consistently. Mm -hmm. So their abilities could work in tandem without having to be controlled. Um, I think that'd yeah. be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything on the hero side that allows you to do that. I know the villains have some, some droid advantage. Uh, but I don't know if heroes do yet. Not to say they won't, we won't see it in the set. I'm sure there's an event that allows you to activate, you know, X number of droids. Um, here's another kind of interesting idea with these cards is that um, you 
something that will have to be clarified. I'm, I'm not. I'm sure it won't really matter. But like C3PO, you know, he's he's in a previous set, but it was still a matter for infinite. But even R2D2, can you have two copies of his support version in your deck? Uh, you can have them in your deck. You just can't have them both out because they're unique. unique. Yeah, so you wouldn't be able to play it until your character version kicked the bucket. Well, is that how you would right. read that? Yeah. So yeah, that's that's how they've explained it in the past because mm -hmm. there was something else that was similar. Yeah, I don't remember what the heck it was, and maybe <laughs> I'm making that up, but I feel like at one point in time something to that effect was was explained. Uh huh. That you would not be able to bring that out until the other one. And maybe it was maybe I'm thinking of two but I feel like, yeah, that's C three PO is unique, period. Mm-hmm. C three PO the perfect gentleman so and R two the low of Yeah, the I don't know about an infinite. Like they're gonna have to they're gonna have to clarify that in infinite. Yeah, because I don't know if C if bringing C three PO as a character, if that counts as you know, I mean, he's not in your deck, so it wouldn't be counted as two copies in your deck. So I imagine you could still bring two copies in your deck if you wanted to. I don't see why yeah. you would, anyways. Um, it's just you know, someone's going to ask the question because someone wants to know. Mm -hmm. Um. So interesting to see Inquiring these two joys together. Um, I, I think this is definitely a design evolution from the ideas of what BT1 and Triple Zero were able to do for the villains. Mm -hmm. How they worked so closely together um, as a set. And I think this is Jeremy's way of um, bringing more of the combo-y style of play into the game. Um, I, so do you, think, do you think their abilities is powerful enough to justify them both being legendaries? Because I'm I'm really struggling with the fact they're taking up so many points on your team. I don't know, and I know Jeremy has said that they make a card like they have reasonings behind why they make a card legendary, and I, they, he actually just talked about it on the stream that they had the other day. And I thought some of that was thematic. Um, so I get from a, I mean, but of course in this set we're seeing Yoda as a rare, but we're seeing C three PO and R two D two as legendary and that yoda is awesome <laughs> yeah and if i had to pick between the two i'd rather have the yoda um so i don't know i like yeah eight eight ten eight eleven is i think they'll see play i'm i'm sure they'll see play. i especially c3po i mean when you the, think about it the cheap focus side that's like maz was you know back in the day r2 and c3po if you activate them both if you can activate them both together without your dice being controlled, can consistently do the th three damage off of R2's die. Mm hmm So, I mean, that's, you know, three damage in off of one die consistently each round, each turn. Um, even that alone is pretty I interesting. I just don't know how you'd, I just don't know how you'd get them. I don't, I can't think of what cards would allow you to do that consistently. Yeah, heroes don't have too much action sheeting anymore, um, mm -hmm. especially in the, in standard. Uh, but I'm sure there's... Infinite, there's there's some. Oh, yeah. Can my R2 and C-3PO played with, like, OG Rey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and her action shenanigans with force, force speed and everything. Anyways. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm From a thematic standpoint, I'm excited mm -hmm. these two are coming to play. They're both 8 health, so that's a good amount of health uh, for the point value that they are. Um, yeah. I'm You're excited to see value what... With that people are going to do with them uh i just i don't know if they're going to hold up muster against uh everything that's else is out there right now i don't know we always say that because like we haven't seen enough of the sets and we've seen a ch pretty good chunk of the set well we've also seen I feel that like as he's as they're designing future sets they're designing groups of thematic cards together so maybe mm -hmm. this is just a way of saying you know, these droids are going to be a thing. The one thing we don't know that um, Team C hasn't showed us yet, although we'll probably see it in the stream, is the plot. Right. Because there's an R2-C3PO plot um, that goes along with all this mess. I wonder if it's like the Rey-Kylo plot. <clears throat> I would imagine it's, I mean, there's going to be some benefit to, to the two of them to uh, being them together. together. Hmm. And if that's worth the, I think the plot costs two points to play. Um, yeah, I can't with... remember now. Um, yeah, I've cropped all that out of the image, of course. <laughs> well, you didn't want it then. Well, no, I did. Oh, there's things that I needed. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's two points. After you, A, blah, 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 exhaust the blah, 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 and C3PO. 
blah, blah, blah. That character. Carrot. Yep. That's as much as we got. Uh, so two points for that. Um, if you played both at Elite, so you're now at your 20, 23 That's points. why I just don't see you playing them Elite. I see you playing them one... And somebody else mentioned in the chat, you play them one die each and then you still have a 14 cost character. A two die 14 cost, which is... You, that's some pretty... That's that's a pretty good population of characters. Yeah, and 14 point characters are better and better these days. Pretty I mean, strong. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. I still don't know why Anakin's pod racer is in the card fan that he's using here. Say that again. What? Anakin's pod racer isn't, you know, the sorry oh, yeah. image that Team Covenant put these pictures out. Anakin's pod mm -hmm. racer is one of the four cards. Which I don't know why we're getting another one of those. No, we're not. I think it's the original one. Oh, okay. I hope they're not reprinting a pod racer. They really want to make pod racing a thing. <laughs> did we did we learn for that one set that it's not? <laughs> it, 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 we all went nah. nah. Like, <laughs> we're, we're leave good. that with the leave that with the second trilogy where up there where it belongs. Um. All right. Well, we look forward to more. I think I the art. Yeah, I like that art on that plot card. That's pretty cool. If you haven't seen it yet, it's like R two or C three PO hanging onto R two, and then I think they're. Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll find out more uh, after Team Covenant's stream of all the cool things that they've got to show us. So, me, yeah, I'm gonna miss like so. Somebody fill me in while I'm filling you in on Origins. Somebody fill me in on the Team Covenant stream because I won't be able to see it. We will. We will post all the pictures in the hangout. How about that? We'll we'll trade we'll trade newses. Sounds good. Um, until then, uh, let's go ahead and uh, review our questions, the answers to the question from last week. Waha. There can be no mistakes this time. I dig your shirt. I want to go, ooh, teeny! Um, Jason's wearing a Jawa shirt, you guys. So, we wanted to know what's your reaction to the recent world announcements were. Then we got a little off. So we, we get it. It's a little that happened a little sooner. And then all this other news happened. So we're just not getting there. So simmer down. <laughs> um, my kill, one of our many, my, we have a my kill collection. Um, if the prizes are as good as we've been led to believe, I think it'll be a cool setup. And I, I feel like they're building up to, yeah, they're, they're doing a good job with prizes at worlds. Uh, -huh. uh, but Michael was meh. So we feel very, differently on two different sides about that's so, okay wow look at all those answers we got that's amazing yeah you guys were overworlds by the time we asked you about it weren't they you? were <laughs> they were very much overworlds ah, that <laughs> happens well you know I just you might i think you know if you guys keep if you guys want to put some good answers out there a lot of answers we might just consider you know finding a wado or maybe one of our new cards here and there to uh share the love with you Oh, oh no you way. have the Chewbacca's. Maybe Can not I see every one? week, so you Do don't you have know. One? could be a surprise. Do you have our Chewbacca's handy? No, they're downstairs. Oh. They're cool. We got a cute... I you don't know what they have to look. Yeah, maybe next week we'll show them off. We got a cute Chewbacca for uh, for our patrons this month. Yeah, if you become a patron, you still have time That's for right. me to stick one in the mailbox to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways. you'll see it for yourself. Uh, so that... That's it. That's what we got for you. I hope Sorry for the technical difficulties you got. That's all good. That's all good. We're still here. We did it. Uh, for those watching live, thank you. Um, you can follow and subscribe via Amazon Prime if uh, it's free and you get a cool emote uh, or a little diet that you can share along with all your um, every time you chat, anywhere you go. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please <laughs> like, subscribe, hit the notification icon. There are more videos in the pipeline. If you're oh, on yeah. our podcast channel, any podcast thing, you know what? Give us a review. Thanks. They, that's awesome. Because we're sitting on a bunch of reviews from a long time ago, and we would love for more recent ones. Whether they're good or bad. I mean, preferably good. We hope if, you like it. If they're bad, if you're listening you can just... and you enjoy it, then, you know, go say, hey, I enjoy that. If that's you're like... listening and you don't enjoy it, then why are you still listening? <laughs> Uh, a huge thanks to Matthew Scott, as always, for maintaining the Facebook page and telling everybody He's that we're here. And thank you so much to all the patrons um, and that ranks are growing, and we sincerely appreciate it. Um, we're yep, yep. doing our best to create some things that uh, uh, show us your thanks because, you know, we're not the group who's going to tell you how to win worlds, but we're the, gonna, we're the group that'll make you cool 
We'll tell you how to have fun there. We'll tell you where to eat. (laughs) We'll tell you what other games to try while you're there. And so we we have helpful information. That's right. We have we're instant group of friends. Once you find us, we're pretty cool. I mean, I think we're at it. Well, okay. I I'm gonna shut up. I'd hang out with us. Yeah, I I (laughs) hang out. And for those who love checking out the value of prices of cards, head over to the App Store and check out the Chance Keys Price Watch. Uh, We continue to update with more stores and more prices and more sets and more cards all the time. Um, So that way you can find where the place to buy it cheapest or maybe help you value your trade with another person if you want to trade your... um, Okay, I can't think that fast enough. Mega Uh, Blaster Troopers away. Yeah, trade your Mega Blaster Trooper for my um, Dengar. You, you still can... need a Dengar? I have an extra one. Do you still uh, need it? You're sending me one, right? Oh, well, don't trade him. No, I'm not. Trade you're sending... another one you have. I just I yeah. just got my second Ventress, so I need nice. the Dengar so I can build the deck. That's I'm hoping bad. that will come to you. I'll get that out this week. I hope so, because I'm going to play it next week. Oh, all right. I'll hurry on that. <laughs> uh Head over to our Facebook page, pinned to the top, is this week's question of the week. What are your favorite Star Wars Destiny accessories? Tokens, boxes, who are they from? Who made them? What do they look like? Oh yeah. Uh, how do you how do you pimp out your game? That's what we want to know. Pimp my destiny. That should be our new show. Like pimp my ride. Yeah. Pimp my. Pimp my <laughs> we, destiny. We go into a game shop and we find someone using their cardboard tokens and we like flip the table on them. Like, <laughs> ah, son, you need to get upgraded. I'm here to pimp. Your destiny. <laughs> it's been a while since I watched. We toss that. vindicators <laughs> tokens on the on the table, and then we like get cause custom like sleeves from Ultra Pro, and then we like see why, why. So here's a funny story. And this is only for people that are actually still listening to the show. Um, so I went to play the other day, right, at, at my local game shop, and Chris is the owner, and he's like building the deck on the fly, and Chris drives me crazy because he plays with the singles out of his like stuff and he doesn't take time to sleeve them so he's sitting there without sleeved cards which drives me crazy Ugh. and then he brings his play mat and he, this play mat is in a play mat top loader <laughs> so he's playing unsleeved cards on a play mat that's in a top loader have you ever seen a play mat top loader once it's I'm ridiculous trying to think where i was yeah because they're like this bit because it's like a protect it's basically like a giant protector or card sleeve for your Right? Am I right in that? Right. Right. Yeah, so it's a giant piece of plastic or like a giant plastic card sleeve. It's ridiculous. I want to know how you get it in there. I want to know why you put it in there in the first place. Isn't a playmat well, supposed to protect your well, card? Well, my thought is... Why are you protecting the playmat? Well, if you won Worlds, you wouldn't want to necessarily break that one out or run the risk of somebody dumping their soda or beer or whatever on it when you were playing. Like, if it was one that, like, meant a lot, please, or you please got it t- signed by somebody, or... Please I'm tell me we're, we're double-sleeving the playmats now. We should. But I want to know how you get it in there. Because I'm thinking, like, with a card, you have to, like, slide it down in. So do you have to try it? Because it's a grippy back on the back of a playmat, right? So how do you get that down into the... And shake it, and I'm just... My assumption is that it has to come apart in like two pieces, and then there's like, like those oh no. old school oh 1990 no. poster board, poster thingies. No, no. Huh. It's, I guess you maybe you put it with the smooth side down and try to put enough leverage so you can just push it. In. That sounds like a that sounds. I'd, Kim, that sounds like a how to video. I would table flip it. That's that's what would happen. <laughs> how to sleeve your play mats? <laughs> While learning new curse words with Kim. Kim, this is a family-friendly show. This is why we've edited out all your curse words. Well, I will. That don't say very often. And sometimes I just say like, "What did I say earlier?" Something in the chat, but it was diddly, like <laughs> "son of a diddly" from The Simpsons. Thank you, Flanders. Flanders has given me lots of good alternatives over the years. Okay, I think we're done. You guys oh. are awesome. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> See Bye. you all next week. This has been the Chance Cube, a Star Wars Destiny podcast, a nonprofit organization dedicated to building community through gaming. 
visit our website for all things Star Wars Destiny, including our price watch, meta tracker, and latest articles from the Chance Cube family. Find our latest videos on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit us at patreon.com slash thechancecube. Your patronage allows us to grow this program and help us give back to the gaming community by sponsoring events, giveaways, and supporting our own community building initiatives. This is Mike Hill, the voice of the Chance Cube. Thanks for listening. The Chance Cube is not affiliated with Fantasy Flight Games, Lucasfilms, or the Walt Disney Company.